I'm hanging off here in the dark because I want to show you this bad boy. I just picked it up. This is the LG Niti Nete. This thing is an amazing retro CRT made by LG in the early 2000s, late 99, something like that. It's got that tremendous kind of see-through colored styling like the N64s had or like the, the Max did at that time. I picked it up for 30 euros locally. And let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I have never paid 30 euros for a consumer set before. This is the first time. It didn't come with a remote, so I can't get into the service menu, unfortunately. And the other part about this, which, look, this might be Crimea River to some of my American friends, but this set is composite only. And the reason that I'm having a little boohoo here is because the vast majority of sets in Europe are RGB SCART. It was a standard. Rarely do I find a set that's composite only. And when I do, it's usually an early model, maybe something really cheap, but even they have SCART on them. So it's a bit strange to do it. I think I know part of the reason why. The serial number is CF20J3RG. As much as I can tell, this is a variant of this model that was made for the Russian market. Uh, I can only find like Russian language information on this exact one. So I don't know. They were using SCART in Russia to, it's not CCAM or anything like that. It's 2000. We're way past all this, the Russian CCAM stuff. If you want to learn more about why uh, Russia and the CCAM standard as opposed to PAL or NTSC is weird. I have a video that I'll put up here right now about a Sega Master System that Sega made specifically for the Russian Soviet market that outputs CCAM. It's a wild story. The tube is round and also because this plastic, it's very Jetsons style, is round as well. When you're looking at it, you really think it's it's something round like a 70s Jetson style TV. It looks great. 480i, not bad, pretty good, but 240p with just those kind of blurry scan lines looks really good. It's about 20 inches. If you sit a few meters back at 240p, this thing is awesome. So I'm going to give you the full Steve from Retro Tech service today. We're going to look at this. We're going to look at the screen. Then I'm going to open up. We're going to have a bit of a poke around inside. And we're just going to have a general tour of the LG Nete. Let's go. Time to open up the case. Thankfully, it was just five screws and I got easy access. First thing I'll do is lift the anode cap and use my discharge tool to remove any leftover electricity. If you're going to carry out any sort of CRT repairs yourself, please read up on how to do this safely. Steve has an excellent video that I'll link in the description. Inside of the monitor, it was very clean, surprisingly, because I needed to clean the outside with household spray. All the caps looked just fine, and given the geometry is already pretty great, I don't need to do any internal servicing here. The seller didn't have the original remote control, which means at the current time, I can't get into the service menu. The only things I can access from the buttons on the front are volume, TV, AV, contrast, brightness, and sharpness. That's it. I was interested to examine the area on the PCB around where the composite connector is. Like I was saying before, when this TV was sold in Europe, it was RGB SCART. There was a SCART port on the back. So why is this Russian one composite only? I examined the PCB headers and my suspicion was right. You can see how the PCB was designed to house a SCART plug. And it seems for this variant, they just used the same PCB but sold it onto only the composite and left audio vias. I tried to make this crude diagram to demonstrate that I believe a SCART plug will drop right into this board. This is really exciting for me because it seems like this RGB mod, which is really more of an RGB restoration, is about as simple as you could hope for. It's a good day to be a European. I got healthcare and I got simple RGB mods. Ho <laughs> ho, the land of milk and honey. <laughs> After I recorded this introduction and service, I decided to just take the night off and enjoy playing my newly Pico Boot modded Spice Orange GameCube. And I've got to take back what I said about 480i earlier. This monitor is a joy 
to play on. It has this warm, lovely glow that comes out of it and the way that the translucent plastic sort of just so warm and glowing around the edges as the screen kind of goes through it, the light comes out. The composite is clear, especially with the official Nintendo composite cables. I'm not getting like big amounts of interference or any uh, sort of dock crawl or something like that. It just looks warm and good and kind of really fits the aesthetic of this TV. To wrap up, I want to reflect on what LG must have been thinking at the time. They've made this great new beautiful looking LG Netair set. And they want to sell it in Europe. And they go, well, in Europe, these people have RGB SCART plugs. So that's what we'll put on the back. But then they seem to have said, well, in Russia, though, we need composite on the back to sell this TV. I I thought that SCART was a thing in Russia. But, okay, the Soviet Union fell only about eight and a half years before. Things are still changing. I don't know. I thought it would have been a thing. But LG have clearly said, no, 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 this is not going to go well. We need to have Composite on this TV. And think about it. Composite is a downgrade. You are downgrading technically, even though it looks beautiful and warm and glowy and all that stuff. It's still a downgrade from RGB SCAR. LG have said, no, we don't mind having the downgrade because we think the Russian customers are going to want Composite only. Look, I don't have it. I don't know if that's positive or negative. I just think it's an interesting kind of take and insight into what the TV industry must have been like in the year 2000. The question I'm left with is whether to RGB restore this or not. On one hand, RGB looks better. Yes, it's not too hard. Even my crude soldering skills will be able to pull this off. On the other hand, I was up to 4 a.m. playing this nice, warm, glowy composite. It fits the screen. Rather, always modifying something. Just leave it stock. Just enjoy it. But it's so simple. And also, I could use one of those SCART to composite adapters if I ever want to play in composite again. So I'm not really losing anything. But then again, and then it's not going to be stock. But what was stock? Is European stock? Is the Russia my stock? I don't know. So tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Should I do the RGB restoration on this TV or not? My mind is not made up. Help me come to an answer here. Thanks for watching, everyone. This is a quick pickup video, trying to get that inside and out of the television. It's just, I'm really happy about this TV, but now I've got to find the remote. I don't know where I'm going to get one of these remotes from, but I'll work on that. Hey, if you want to know more about CRTs, my friend Steve and I have a podcast called the Cafe Ray Podcast. We talk about old TVs. Steve's great at fixing these ones. You can check out the videos on this channel here. My name's Lewis. Thanks very much for watching Zez Retro.